This Monday, Ubiquiti is taking a very secure step forward by force enabling two-factor authentication for all Ubiquiti accounts. This policy was announced at the beginning of the year, but it is now going into effect now and will be force enabled this coming Monday, July 22nd. Two-factor authentication, for those of you who don't know, is like an extra layer of security on your account. It's an additional step after entering your password to make sure that you are actually you and not somebody pretending to be you who has actually stolen your password. It does this by utilizing a familiar device, a device that you've already used in the past, in order to confirm that you are who you say you are. In the past several years, there have been many high-profile attacks that simply could have been prevented if they had just used two-factor authentication. A hacker group says it stole personal details from more than half a billion users. AT&T says hackers access call and text records of nearly all of its cell customers. A major hack of MGM resorts. You may recognize some of these brands, such as Ticketmaster, AT&T, MGM Grand, Microsoft, Roku, 23andMe, and more. So how do two-factor authentication apps work? They work by requiring a unique code at the time of login. Essentially, you set it up in advance with a secure device, such as a phone or a computer, and you receive a secure code when you are attempting to log in to make sure that you also have access to that device, thus proving that you are actually you. This code can be generated in an authentication app or via a code sent to your email, which you may have seen from other providers, or even a text message, although those approaches are significantly less secure as you are able to spoof or intercept both emails and text messages. Speaking of secure, I want to invite you to a webinar this Wednesday on the best practices of migrating from on-prem to cloud storage by our friends over at MoveBot, which is a cloud migration platform. It takes place two days after you should have already activated two-factor authentication on your Ubiquiti account, so you should have plenty of time to attend. They'll cover everything you need to know in order to have a smooth migration experience. I'll leave the link to all the details in the description down below. There are a few different ways to do two-factor authentication that will work with your Ubiquiti account. The first and recommended approach is obviously going to be Ubiquiti's UI Verify app, which makes it super easy to do once you're logged in. If you're trying to log in on another device, you will receive a pop-up that asks if you are in fact attempting to log into your Ubiquiti account. All you have to do is say, yes, it's me, and it will allow you to proceed to log in on the other device. The second approach is using an authentication app. Google has one, Microsoft has one, it's called Google Authenticator and Microsoft Authenticator respectively. Or there are also other options from security and password management apps such as Keeper or 1Password or others that are out there in the market. Now oftentimes those are used by businesses because they're very easy to control and manage from an admin perspective, but they're also available for consumers as well. And if you have, and if you're looking for a good way to manage all of your passwords, I do recommend checking them out. This is the approach that I typically use. However, in this case, I am going to use UI verify. The third and least secure option is a code sent to your email inbox every time you log in. Now this is also the least secure and slowest solution of the three where you have to wait for the email to come in before you can enter that code as opposed to having a pop-up or having the code generated directly on your device. As I mentioned earlier, it's also less secure due to the fact that emails can be spoofed or even intercepted. You can, of course, change and or add a authentication method in your Ubiquiti account. I'll leave a link to that down below. Now, I'm sure you have a number of questions, and I've tried to anticipate a number of them and already spoke with the Ubiquiti team on this, so let's try and answer them now. What if your internet goes down and you don't have any cellular service because you're in the mountains in the middle of nowhere and you have no way to manage the device that you're trying to log into locally? The good news there is that an authentication app such as Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator does not require the internet to work. You are able to generate those codes on your device and log in using one of those codes when prompted for the two-factor authentication. Keep in mind, you can have multiple forms of authentication active on your account, and when you're logging in, you only need one of them. So if you normally use the UI Verify app, but you're in a situation where that's not available, you can fall back to the Google or Microsoft Authenticator app in instead. This can be helpful in case your phone dies, you'll still have another method to be able to log in. But what about local accounts? If you aren't connected to Ubiquiti Cloud and you're only managing your device locally, well, those are not going to be affected at all. This change is only coming to accounts that are connected to UI.com that are Ubiquity.com account. You may have heard on the news that pass keys are the answer to a passwordless future and that larger companies are starting to adopt them. And I did ask the Ubiquity team if they would be available and they said they are actively looking into this. So stay tuned. But what about hardware MFA keys such as YubiKey or Google's Titan key? I asked the team about that as well and they said, good news, support for those is on the roadmap and will be available soon. So stay tuned for that as well. What about having UI verify on multiple devices so that you don't lose access? 
Support for that is coming as well, so stay tuned. One thing to note is if you do have multiple accounts, you are going to have to go through this process for each and every single one of them. And the reason for that is because this is being mandated for every single account that is connected to Ubiquity.com. Okay, but what if I have Unify Protect and I have the doorbell and somebody rings the doorbell? Am I going to have to put my two-factor authentication code in every time the doorbell rings? That'll take forever. Nope, you're not gonna have to do that. This is only going to prompt you when you are logging in. Now, if you do find that you're being asked to enter that code when the doorbell does ring, likely it means that you are not opening the app often enough and it is timing out. You can adjust the timeout settings in the security settings of your Ubiquity account, and I'll leave a link to that down below. Be sure to set up two-factor authentication on your Ubiquity account by Monday, July 22nd, or you will be automatically enrolled into the email two-factor authentication method. And if this is the first time you're hearing about two-factor authentication, please go do some more research on it, choose a provider, and start enrolling in two-factor on all the rest of your accounts so that we can all live a more secure future.